In this video, I'll be sharing my thoughts on the Stranger Things chapter perks. Let's begin with Steve's perks, starting with Babysitter. This perk removes the scratch marks and blood trails of survivors you unhook for 8 seconds and reveals you and the killer to each other for 4 seconds. In the many games I tried to use this perk, it never really felt like it was making an impact. In most cases, the killer would be in a chase with another survivor or across the map during the unhook, making the perk unnecessary. In other cases, the aura reveal would wind up backfiring and get me into trouble I could have otherwise avoided. I think borrowed time or made my go-to perk for saving teammates. Next is camaraderie. This perk pauses your timer during the struggle phase if a teammate comes within 16 meters of you. There are a couple problems I have with this perk. First, it requires you to get hooked twice, which isn't something you ever want to happen to you. Second, if the killer brings a Mori, this perk won't see any use at all. And third, there are a lot of other perks that can prevent you from getting hooked in the first place. Taking a proactive approach to avoiding hooks is better than reacting to getting hooked. So while camaraderie did save me in a game or two, I probably wouldn't have needed it if I'd run a different perk. And Steve's final perk is Second Wind. After healing a survivor one health state, the next time you're unhooked, you'll heal yourself over 30 seconds. Second Wind was, in my opinion, Steve's best perk. It allowed me to get right back into the game after getting unhooked, rather than wasting my time having to heal. It was also able to activate during chases, which made it an effective anti-tunneling perk. I think Second Wind will become a staple for players who enjoy running the killer around. Next we have Nancy's perks, starting with Better Together. This perk reveals the aura of the generator you're working on to all teammates within 32 meters. It also reveals all survivors to you if one gets downed while you're working on a generator. When I used this perk, it was kind of hard to tell whether it was making a difference or not. Experienced players don't really need help finding generators since they've already memorized the map layouts. And while being able to see my teammates' auras helped increase situational awareness, I feel like the perk Bond would have been an overall better pick. Bond, by the way, is a fairly popular perk, and teammates who use it won't benefit from players running better together since they can already see your aura. However, on maps where generators are harder to find, Better Together will undoubtedly help your team find generators more easily. In most other cases though, I'd say its utility isn't worth the perk slot. Next is Fixated. This perk allows you to see your own scratch marks and walk 20% faster while uninjured. This perk definitely seemed more geared towards beginners, but I found that being able to see my own scratch marks made pulling off jukes easier. The faster walking speed was also helpful for getting into position and evading the killer. But the requirement to remain uninjured to maintain the movement speed is why I won't be using it. That condition removes a lot of potential for the perk during chases, and just doesn't make sense to me. Killers already have plenty of ways to track injured survivors, and extra walking speed doesn't make them harder to catch. It simply increases the chance that a survivor could pull off a successful juke. Urban Evasion at one point also required survivors to be healthy in order to use it. But that condition was removed and led to a lot of players including it in their builds. If we ever want to see more variety in perk builds, perks need to be made strong enough to compete with the likes of Adrenaline, Decisive Strike, and Borrowed Time. So I feel like removing the injured requirement from Fixated would be a step in the right direction. And as for Nancy's final perk, Inner Strength allows you to heal yourself after cleansing a totem by hiding inside a locker for 8 seconds. Out of all the Stranger Things perks, this one struck me as the best. Being able to heal yourself in half the normal time without the help of a teammate or medkit is game-breaking, and the requirement to cleanse a totem is relatively safe and easy to meet. It also makes totem cleansing more appealing to survivors, since the time spent cleansing a totem will get turned into a heal later in the game. You can also activate it multiple times during a match. I'm convinced this will become a core perk for a lot of players. Now for the Demogorgon's perks. Its first perk is Surge, which instantly regresses all generators within 24 meters when putting a survivor into the dying state with a basic attack. This perk is probably the Demogorgon's best. It helps slow generator progress just by playing the game, and doesn't require the killer to waste time kicking generators. The amount of regression is only about 10 seconds, however, and given how small the area of effect is, 
This perk will probably only damage one generator per down. It also won't activate at all if you're using a special attack like Shred to down a survivor. I'll probably stick to using a perk like Pop Goes the Weasel until they buff this one. Next we have Cruel Limits. This perk blocks all window and vault locations within 24 meters of a completed generator for a short time. When I tried using this perk, it came off as one of those luck-based ones that I despise so much. While blocking access to windows is definitely powerful, the majority of the time this perk activated, I was nowhere near the completed generator. Additionally, some maps had few or no windows near generators, making this perk largely useless. However, the few times it did work for me, it allowed me to end chases quickly. But if I want a window blocking perk, I'll stick with Bamboozle since it's more reliable. And the Demogorgon's last perk is Mindbreaker. This causes exhaustion for survivors who work on generators below 50% repair progression. This perk struck me as the weakest, and half the time I didn't even know I was afflicted by it. Exhaustion lasts only 3 seconds after leaving a generator, and the fact that the perk does nothing once a generator reaches the 50% mark largely made it feel like it wasn't creating an impact. I hardly saw any killers using this perk, and I immediately swapped it out myself after I'd finished testing. Mindbreaker probably needs a buff more than any other perk. So that covers the Stranger Things perks, but there are three other perks I'd like to talk about that got reworked. The first one is Dark Sense, which received a buff that allows survivors to see the killer's aura when any generator is completed. The requirement used to be that you would have to complete the generator to activate its benefit, which would usually only lead to the perk activating once or twice per game. I think this was a much needed buff for the perk, and I could see it being used more by players now. Revealing the killer's aura grants survivors situational awareness that will help them make better decisions. And since the perk activates more frequently now, it will have a noticeable impact throughout the match. Left Behind also received a rework where instead of granting a bonus to repair speed, it now reveals the aura of the hatch when you're the last survivor in the trial. I think this rework will get players to use the perk more, but not that much more. There's only two scenarios where you'll be the last survivor in the trial. Either everyone else has died, or everyone else has escaped. These two situations are pretty rare to come by, and being the last survivor remaining is in itself a challenge. Also, even if you can see the hatch's aura, there is the off chance the killer will reach it before you do, and you can get around that using a key, but then you're investing both your item and perk slot just to escape a situation that may not even happen. You might not even need this perk and find the hatch before you're the last one alive. So with all that being said, I think Left Behind needs a buff. Maybe allow two survivors to be alive instead of one to widen its use case. And lastly, we have Dying Light. This was reworked to where instead of the perk's focus being on killing the obsession to apply a debuff to the survivor team, now it applies a stacking debuff to all survivors except the obsession every time you hook a player who's not the obsession. I think this change will make the perk healthier for the game. It encourages the killer to go after other players rather than tunnel a single survivor. Each stack of Dying Light adds about 2.5 seconds of generator time and 0.5 seconds of heal time. Which doesn't seem like much, but you don't really have to do anything special other than hooking survivors to receive the benefit. So I think this rework will lead to the perk seeing more use. So that's it for my thoughts on the Stranger Things chapter perks. Thanks for watching! If you found this video helpful, make sure to subscribe for future content.